Welcome to this place where Bethlehem Lutheran Church is gathered for worship this morning. It is our annual picnic. If you haven't figured that out yet. If you brought hot dog donations, there is a cooler. There is a cooler on uh, benches over there next to all the drink coolers marked hot dog donations. Make sure to put your hot dogs in there. Uh, when we finish worship this morning, we are ready to eat. Please allow the Dulcimer Society to eat first. That way they can start playing again while we eat. And speaking of, please join me in thanking the Dulcimer Society for again providing our music. As a As we begin worship this morning, I invite you to sing. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your grace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah.
And I invite children forward for a children's message. Including the ones way out there. Never has anything in storage. Mommy, 
God never takes all of the love that we give God and says, my, oh, my, I need to build a bigger heaven to hold all this love. No, God instead gives out every little bit. God takes a tray of brownies and puts it on a table, as I'm going to do. He says, anyone who wants it, take it. Anyone who doesn't have enough, take more. And when it runs out, I'll find even more. God's not going to keep God's love away from you. God's not going to put it up on top of the fridge and say, only after you've done enough good things, you get the reward of my love. In fact, what happens if you eat too many brownies? What? Sugar bugs. I <laughs> don't know what that means. What happens if you eat too many brownies? You get sick. You kind of get sick. You get sick of it. What? Because you've had too much. You ever think you can have too much of God's love? Probably not. Or at least it's too much, but not so much that it makes you Remember, it's like water. You always want more. So as was unhelpfully pointed out, these are not my brownies. So I cannot just put them on the ground and walk away. However, they will be put on the table. And the top will be open when it's time to eat. And I hope that you enjoy them, that you enjoy the rest of the food, and that you remember that God never holds any of God's love back, but freely shares it until there's nothing left over for God. Thanks be to God. Thanks Amen. be to God for God. Amen. <laughs>
These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge and arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them the parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my gifts. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may sit. Debbie, Jordan, and I just completed a move. A move from a house we were renting to finally a house that we bought. And when I say that we just moved, I mean that this afternoon, after worship, we're meeting our landlord because today's the final day of our lease, turning our keys and do the final walkthrough. We have just moved. <laughs> Don't clap yet. <laughs> oh, there's more. <laughs> For the last few weeks, we've been moving things over from one house to another. We tried to do this over the last few months when we closed on the house, but for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is for procrastinators. We got to July and went, oh crap, we got to move stuff. And as we were putting stuff first in our cars and taking trips one by one, which we'd never been able to do before because we'd always be moving like across states. So we could actually you know, take a load and come back and get more. I kept asking myself, where did all this stuff come from? Now, before we moved three years ago here to Indianapolis, the longest we lived in one place in our relationship together was five years. And before that, we moved, or I moved six times in the previous five years. So we had gotten pretty good at you know, shedding our excess because we simply couldn't afford to get bigger trucks to carry it all. But for some reason, this it felt like we had more stuff. And there were things that, yeah, we had separated out to you know, donate and give away or sell on various different markets, and, and we did that. Not as much as we hoped. So we ended up moving a bunch of stuff that we were planning to get rid of, just hadn't gotten around to yet. But as the boxes filled up, the hallways and stuff from the new house, which is bigger than our old house, and yet when everything's in boxes blocking the way, it feels smaller. I couldn't 
help but wonder to myself, what are we going to do with all this stuff? And then preparation for this week's sermon came around, and I would thank God, because I've already been feel bad now. <laughs> now you're basically describing a guy who did exactly what we did. Moved from one house to another, got rid of one, got a bigger, uh, uh, another, and storing up all our stuff in there. And thinking to ourselves, ah, finally, we can relax, eat, drink, and be merry. We've got to live in the house at least 10 years, or we have to pay back the down payment stuff that we got. So it's time to settle down and really enjoy all our stuff. <laughs> Half of which can't be enjoyed anyway, because it needs to be thrown out. <laughs> There's not a lot of grace in this week's gospel reading, at least on the surface. That's sort of the beauty and the curse of the two green seasons where we just focus really not on Jesus' life, but on his teaching. Because Jesus can be a harsh teacher at times. We human beings have a tendency to just gather as much in as we can just in case. We're sort of hardwired for it. And it makes sense given our ancestry. Our ancestors never knew from season to season, from year to year, if they were going to have enough to survive. So it was a very prudent course of action to store up and make sure that we had enough. But when we grew beyond our immediate need in many parts of the world to have and gather enough, we never lost that instinct. Now we continue to gather continue to hold on, and we continue to tear down our barns, metaphorically or literally, and build larger ones, just in case we need that stuff, just in case we need more, just in case we won't have enough. Now, I want to be clear that there are many places in the world, in our country, in our state, in our city in which people do not have enough. And that little bit of extra may mean the difference between life and death. But we're not talking about them. We're talking about us. Like a tray of brownies, we just hold on and admire and keep to ourselves. And that doesn't just extend to our physical possessions, it extends to what I might call our emotional possessions. Love is that odd thing that we know only grows when it's given away. But have you ever met anyone who seems to pour their love just in case they need it for themselves? I meant it when I told our children this morning that God is not a worker. God may be a bit of an eccentric collector in that it's not always clear how I and you and all of our neighbors fit into this grand collection that God calls God's children. And there are times when I think, God, maybe you need to pare it down a little. But God doesn't hoard the important thing. God doesn't hoard love. God doesn't hoard mercy. God doesn't hoard forgiveness. For like the rich man who stored everything up in a new barn only to die that night, what use does God have for forgiveness? God doesn't need it. God doesn't want it. So God gives it away. Gives every last bit of forgiveness away, holding nothing back for God's self. God throws out mercy like a person with a bag of candy in a parade. Just throws it out there. Doesn't care who gets it. Doesn't care if they're being too generous. Doesn't care if they're creating a bunch of sugar bugs at the end of the day. God throws it out anyway. Until there's nothing left in that bag of mercy. Until there's nothing left in that box of forgiveness. 
until there's nothing left in that container of love. God just gives it away. God might be better served by, you know, paying attention to market forces, to understanding that we're in a recession of love and kindness and human dignity, and to maybe keep some of that for God's self, just in case. God would be the first one to hop onto a meme stock and say, great, I'll just throw my money out. I'll throw my abundance out. <coughs> Human life may as well be a meme stock, rising and falling at the whims of people who don't really understand how their actions affect others in their human lives. But God says, I don't care. I'm going to be generous. I'm going to give it all. I don't care if it's a dumb financial decision. I don't care if the people I love are not worthy of that love. I don't care if they exercise a fiduciary responsibility to make the best use of my love as they can. I'm giving it anyway. If there is a barn in heaven, it must be pretty small because there's nothing left for God to do. We are the gracious recipients of that love. We are the unworthy receivers of God's mercy. We are the stupid, wasteful, ignorant users of God's forgiveness. And God doesn't care. God gives it anyway. I hope to one day emulate a fraction of God's generosity. Just a bit of God's reckless, self-sacrificial giving. I take Jesus' words and I go, yeah, that's probably me. But it's not God. I don't have to worry about God storing that extra love and keeping it away just in case. I don't have to worry that I'll run out of a ration of God's forgiveness and God will say, nope, I gotta save some. And maybe if I pay enough attention to what God is doing, I'll start to do a little bit of it myself. That is, after all, what it means to be a disciple. To follow the great example that Jesus lays down for us. Oh my God, what an example it is. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. After each petition, there will be a brief time of silence. In that silence, I invite you to offer your own addition to that petition related to that particular petition. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially, we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness. For the gifts of relationship with others. faith in your church. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. For the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare. For all who work for peace and international harmony. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction. For the church of Jesus Christ in every land. For all who are in need of care and healing. Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus wants. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you gather us together on this beautiful day to share your word, to share in the company of each other, and to share in food the bounty of the land that you have made. Bless us as we eat it. Bless those who have prepared it. And bless us for your service in the world. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us.